You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Hello, welcome to the next episode of Ideas and Leaders podcast. Today, my guest is Vikran Sharia. He is the founder and CEO of bestsellingbook.com. And guess about what we will be speaking about today. We are going to speak about books and uh, how to write a book, how to publish a book and all uh, the topics connected with it. I'm super interested in it myself. I hope that you too. Hi, Vikran. It's great to have you on Ideas and Leaders. Hey, Elena. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited for our conversation. Yes. You know, I'm super excited about our, our conversation as well, because I was thinking about publishing my book in the upcoming mm -hmm. future. And, you know, I have some experience. I am a book author. I have some experience in this field, but my previous books, everything that I published, it, it was all academic writing. But I think that the when you want to actually publish best-selling book, it works a bit differently. So what do you recommend to your clients when they come to you and they say, hey, I want to write a book? Where do we usually start? So we always start with the outline quadrant. And most of the people, they don't understand what exactly is outline, outline quadrant. So they know that they have to create a book outline. But before the book outline, they have to create what I call the outline quadrant. And the outline quadrant consists of four elements. The first is the book idea, means what's the basic idea of the book. The second is why exactly you want to write the book, because it is going to define how you have to craft the entire book, right? I'll talk about it in a while. Uh, the third element is readers, because you are eventually writing the book, not for yourself, for your readers, because they are going to be people who will be reading your book. So what are their pain points? What are the problems they are facing? What are the pains they are going through? And uh, then comes the hook of the book. Maybe there are going to be hundreds and thousands of books out there on the same topic. How your book is going to be different. So these four elements combines becomes outline quadrant. And once we help the client understand that what is their outline quadrant, then we start with the book outline. So um, for example, if we'll start with your uh, book, right? So what's the book idea you have in your mind for your book topic? So I was thinking about a book on communication as in business as I am communication coach. Mm. And I think that actually uh, I have the similar challenge to many other authors and prospective authors that when I'm thinking about my book that I have in my mind, and I've read a lot on this topic, but uh, I think that I have a certain framework that I want to share in a bit different way. But what is stopping me is one, uh, first thing is that I think that something is already out there on this topic because mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to kind of repeat something that was already said before. This is this is challenge number one. And challenge number two, of course, that I hope that we will cover as well, is where to find time. If you are not a book writer and you're not doing it, it is not your day-to-day -day job and you actually mm. have your job work to do. So where to find time? So if you you know, manage to discuss those two challenges, I think that it would be great. Definitely, we'll cover both of these uh, challenges. So first of all, let's create your book outline quadrant so that our listeners or your listeners are going to understand how to create the outline quadrant. So you mentioned that the book idea is communication, but it is around the business. Now let's talk about why exactly you want to write a book. Means um, what will be the back end of the book? Means what exactly 
exactly do you want people to do once they read your book? Do you want people to visit your website? Do you want people to maybe subscribe to your email list? Or do you want people to, uh, maybe you have a coaching program in the back end or a, any podcast you want to promote? What ex exactly do you want to promote? Or why exactly you want to write this book? Yeah, I want to promote my business. So I have a podcast, I have my coaching programs, individual and group programs. And yeah, so uh, I think that uh, I could definitely connect uh, the book with, with what I do professionally. Great. So if you'll cover the why more. So for example, if you want to promote your coaching program in the back end, so maybe what you could do is, uh, of course, you have a a uh, book about communication, but maybe you can release uh, just seven steps checklist or something, just a one or one page or two page giveaway, which you can offer inside the book, which you can offer before the introduction itself. And the benefit is uh, nowadays, of course, uh, there's a feature on Amazon called look inside feature where people can read a few pages of the book. So even if they haven't bought your book, they will be reviewing all of the initial pages and then they can click on the, uh, the giveaway which you are offering and they, can, they will be landing to a landing page where they, they will be a, become your subscriber to get um, that specific giveaway, right? And then of course, with your email marketing and with your value emails, you can maybe build your brand. At the same time, in your e email signatures, you can talk about your uh, podcast, about your coaching program, about your video courses, anything which you can do. So this is how like you have to understand that using a book, of course, if you have something in the back end, then it's going to really help you uh, do so many things, right? You are building the email list. You're also promoting your podcast. You're also promoting your coaching program, group program, also your video courses, anything which you can do if you will capture their lead. Now, of course, you will write the book, but you will also be thinking about that what you can offer to them, which they would they really want to do. Maybe after every chapter, you want to offer kind of a resource guide. And again, like if they will click on that link to get the resource guide, they have to maybe provide the email address. And then inside the email box, they will be receiving that resource guide for that specific thing, for that specific chapter. So this way, like, of course, we, will, we have covered the why. So now let's talk about your readers. It means who are the primary uh, readers? Why exact? Like who are the people who would love to get this book? My readers are, I think, my ideal clients. So they are entrepreneurs. They are managers uh, who want to improve their communication skills and who want mm. to speak a bit like a TED speaker. Because uh, mm. I am a TEDx coach and uh, organizer. I'm organizing TEDx events for many years. And this is, I think, this is kind of my hook, the thing that you were talking mm. about. And uh, this is also the value that I want to share with my audience to show them that they don't have to be, you know, just to use structures and to, to do everything according to the rules, but they can add a little bit of wow effect to their communication to be more mm. effective. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So, of course, we are also covering the hook along with the readers. Uh, now, in the readers, of course, you have... Uh, mentioned the primary demographic that they are the business owners and entrepreneurs. Uh, let's cover, let's go deeper into that. Means you have to ask yourself these kind of questions like what kind of pain or what kind of problem they are facing if they haven't read your book yet? So these type of questions will, of course, maybe you will answer that um, they are not able to grow their business or they are not able to get more exposure because their communication is not tight enough. And, yeah, but yeah. with your book, with, with, with your book, of course, it's going to help them do that. So these kind of questions will actually help you understand what are their pain points, what are their problems. And maybe you can also explore different Facebook groups. Maybe you already joined into so many Facebook groups or LinkedIn's where people are looking for these type of thing, right? There's so many groups out there about how to get on TEDx, right? I'm also a part of some of those groups on Facebook. So you can have some kind of a poll that what exactly, what kind of pain they're facing, what kind of problem they're having, what kind of struggles they have, so that you exactly understand what is the main challenge, right? So maybe there are already books out there on the same topic, but it will help you 
define that how your book is going to be different. And now we will move to the hook part. So maybe there are going to be dozens of books who which is going to be similar to your book. So uh, there are two or three ways, which of course I have already mentioned. Like you can join some Facebook group, you can run some polls. There's also a way like uh, list out top fifty books on the communication, right? Top fifty competitors' book which are doing really really well on Amazon. What you could do is you can go check out their introduction, right? You don't have to buy the book. You can just go to look inside feature. You can read a few pages of the book. You can see exactly what they are delivering. You you will get an idea after going through the introduction, right? That uh, or maybe just the table of content. That check it out. That what what are the what kind of a value they're providing in the table of content and also explore the three star reviews on Amazon. And these three star reviews basically provide the pros that what exactly is good inside the book and also what is missing in the book. And then you have to use those missing elements inside your book. So this will be the hook of the book, right? So these four elements combined is going to give you way more clarity on how you have to craft the entire book, which is going to be also helpful for your readers, also helpful for your business in the back end, right? We have covered almost everything, the 360 degree of the entire book writing, publishing, and marketing as well over here, right? Yeah. yeah okay, I, so I, I really love it that uh, you, you're using, suggesting to use a book as a part of a funnel so you can mm-hmm. actually, uh, you're not only promoting yourself as an expert in the Mm. industry as you know it used to work some time ago but now you can actually use your book to lead your potential customers to your services and i love it exactly and people will love it the thing is that uh in the last year in in just last one year i enrolled into three coaching programs and all of these three coaching program I got discovered. I discovered these after reading the books. <laughs> so I read these books. I just wanted to work with the author, right? And I just emailed them that, hey, like, I really want to work with you. So uh, one, of them, they, one of them is charging $3,000 per month. But somehow I just want to work with them because I know that this person, I know that this person is... Uh, really expert on the topic and he can really help me out one person is on marketing the second person is about systems and the third person is about business and management so i've hired all of these three authors because i knew that if they are delivering so much value in the book itself then what if i'll be working with them one-on-one so there will be no new doors open if you will be uh, releasing your book or publishing a book so this has happened with me, like myself, and also with our clients as well, like we're releasing the books, we're publishing the book, the new doors are getting open, they are getting invited to new speaking gigs, right? They're getting invited to podcast, it becomes very easy for you to like, if you reach out to a podcast to become a guest, then it, people really want to have best selling authors on the show. Right? So, uh, so yeah, like these elements, that, does it make sense? Like, of course, did you get more clarity on? Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, you know what, there is a thin line between, uh, you know, this writing a book and uh, then getting your clients from a book because I, I can see that there is a danger that you can give away too much in the book and then people will get everything from your book and they're like, hey, why, why should I work uh, with him or her if I already know everything on the topic? So what do you mm-hmm. recommend in this sense? How much sure. should we give away? I think you should give away maybe 90% of your information free or maybe in, in your book. I'll, I have a reason for that. So the thing is, uh, there's an expert called, um, name, his name is Ramit Sethi. Maybe you've heard about it. He has, he's a New York Times bestselling author of a book called I'll Teach You How to Become Rich or something, right? Maybe it's, it's a really famous book and the, the guy is really famous. Uh, and he has also mentioned in so many of his YouTube channels that he 
provides 99% of his information free and inside his book. And he has like uh, courses for maybe $500, $10,000 courses and coaching program in the back end. But still people are like craving to get into those courses, right? He just opened it for just one week or two weeks. And then they are, then he has to close the doors. And there's a reason for that. And I'll talk about it. So the thing is that most of the people out there, uh, they are just in the information or shiny object syndrome mode means they're just reading books after books. They have the problem, but they're just reading books after books. And then they're not able to solve it because they are not able to uh, follow the advice themselves. So what they need is they need an accountability assistance, right? So if they will be working with an expert like you one-on-one, -on -one, because you will be working, maybe you will be having a weekly call with them or a bi-weekly call with them. You'll be providing them the exact homework or exactly what they have to do this week. And then again, they will be having a call with you. So there will be a deadline, right? There will be someone above you because the problem with business owners and entrepreneurs and leaders is they are the leaders of themselves. They don't have anyone else on the top, right? To letting them know that they have to complete this thing on time. So the thing is that I would recommend that give away 90% of the things people still want to work with you. So this is what happened with me as well. Like uh, the three experts, which I have hired, almost they have shared everything inside the book, but still I wanted to work with them one-on-one -on -one because I knew that, and it was one of the best decisions of my, in my business, right? So to hire them. And of course I, I do that. Like, first of all, I read people's, like whenever I want to work with any expert, I simply check out their book. And then of course I, want to work with him. If I find really great value in the book, then I go and uh, buy their courses, their programs, their co I get enrolled into the coaching program as well. Does it answer your question? Yes, absolutely. I, I think that we definitely need to share a lot of value in what we give away in our books and uh, you know, all the other content that we share so that people actually find uh, find it interesting to work with us. Right. And what about this second question that I asked mm -hmm. in the beginning? So what would you say to the people who are busy, who don't have time, they work a lot, but they also have a lot of value to share. So one thing sure. is to go live on Instagram, for example, and share in 15 minutes a short tip. And another thing is actually sit down and write a chapter of a book and it mm. takes much more time and as a book author I already know how much time it takes to to write everything so what is your recommendation on this sure uh, so I believe that there will be two type of people who will be listening to this podcast the one one type of person or one type of people will be who will be um, having the financial resources to work with maybe a professional ghostwriters and the team of writers, editors, publishers, marketer, and another person will be like, who want to write the book themselves, right? So I'll be answering the question for both of these people, for people like who have the money and people who don't have the money and they want to write the book themselves. So of course, the answer is very clear for those people who have the money. They can simply hire team uh, like bestsellingbook.com, like which we do. We offer book writing, publishing, marketing services. So they just have to come on a call with, with us one or two times in a week, and we take care of everything. We have a team of angel writers, which is the hybrid version of ghost writers, who take the interview, understand their book ideas, their thought process, vision of the book, message, and then write the book for them in their voice with their personality. And once it is written, then of course we do the editing, cover designing, publishing, marketing. We do this, get the sales, we get the reviews. We make sure that the big book becomes bestseller on Amazon. And also if they um, also want to get on Wall Street Journal or USA Today, we also offer that services as well. So everything we will be doing that, we offer done for you services for that. Now let's talk about the other type of people who want to write the book themselves, but and at the same time, uh, Vikran, mm -hmm. so for for, uh, for a moment, I wanted to interrupt you and just 
to make sure for our listeners, you said for people who have money. So what type of uh, investment are we talking about uh, in, if we want to use the services of Angel Writer, for example? Sure. So uh, uh, if you go and check out the ghostwriting services, then there are three types of ghostwriters you can find. Uh, the first type will be like premium version, right? Like top tier ghostwriters, like who are very, very expensive. Like they charge you more than six figures, like more than $100,000. And people like Robert Kiyosaki, Stephen Covey, Richard Branson, all of these famous people, like they have ghostwritten the, the book themselves. It means they, the book were, were not written by themselves. They were ghostwriters who interviewed them and wrote the book for them. So they paid maybe more than six figures to make sure that, of course, their book is written in their voice. Then comes the middle version, means they charge $15,000 to $20,000 to $30,000, right? This is the range, right? They also provide the premium quality. But of course, uh, uh, sometimes it, be it becomes very difficult to find these people. And then they also like cheap quality ghostwriters, like who don't, who just will be after your money. They will not be producing really good kind of quality book for you. So uh, of course, like I would recommend to uh, not go with the cheap quality ghostwriters. So if you go with the ghostwriters, then it would be like for us, like uh, in our company, we like the investment is around $12,000 for the angel writing, right? Like we have a proper system where how these ghostwriters, how these angel writers interview, they have a proper system, they have a proper checklist they have to follow, and then they write the book for them. And of course, we offer unlimited revision, right? So we will keep writing until you are super happy with every chapters of the book. And once it is done, then we also will be doing the editing of the book, then the proofreading of the book, so that make sure that the book is completely error-free before publishing. So this is the, the angel writing. Then there are all the other services like which we offer, like uh, uh, cover designing, publishing, marketing. So there are total 30 different services which we offer in the entire six months, right? Which makes a really high quality book. And it is around $30,000 where we take care of everything for them, mm -hmm. right? So this okay. is exactly what they could expect for the uh, for the investment part. Perfect, uh, perfect. And for those who, let's say, don't have such uh, funds in the beginning, what would you recommend to how to start writing their book themselves? Definitely. So, Elena, like we are living in 21st century. And if you'll still be writing the book in the old, like uh, 19th century, like we have so initially, like in 19th century, like we had to sit down and write the book and then create an outline and then we had to run after a publisher. And so it, was, it is completely like in a 90s era, right? So we are now living in 21st century. There must be a solution which, is, which should be fast, which should be also serve. Like even if you're super busy, it should really work for you as well. And even if you don't have the proper skill set to write a high quality book, still you could do that. Right. So there's a solution for that and which we have uh, uh, covered in which we offer to our clients, like sometimes if they don't have the fund for the angel writing, we share this technique for them. So um, the thing is that most of the clients, like most of the business leaders, speakers, entrepreneurs, coaches, they are not good at writing the book. But they are really good at speaking the ideas in the book right? They're really good at talking about those ideas. They're really good at talking about the message, the story, but they are not good at writing the book. They're not good at the actual writing process. So what's the solution for this is um, once you have the outline quadrant ready, use that outline quadrant to create a table of content or a working book outline. You don't have to be perfect. You can just start with a rough book outline. Once it is ready, then what you could do is instead of writing each and every chapters, you can speak those chapters, right? Have a mic or something and start recording yourself while talking those ideas, right? You have the table of content ready, means you have the main ideas then the sub ideas ready. Just start talking about it, right? And record the every chapters, right? Uh, chapter by chapter, record all the entire book. Don't write now, just record it and then have a transcriber 
or there are some tools out there like rev.com or happy scribe which you just have to upload the entire recording and then it's going to transcribe it so just use that as well and which is going to create the entire draft ready for you now the thing is i know that it will be completely junk but at least you have the first draft of the book ready you have the first draft ready i know you will not be happy with that but the thing you have to do is now you have to rearrange all those ideas or maybe there are some tools out there nowadays uh, it is called jarvis.ai or it's also called conversion.ai you can just use those tools just copy paste your content and it could rewrite it in a really really high quality way right and uh, so maybe you can use this uh, jarvis.ai resource inside your podcast resource guide but the thing is you can use it and create uh, use that tool to write that entire book without you writing it you can just copy and paste it and it's going to create it a better version of that and then oh, that's once amazing. you Yep. And at the same time, you can rearrange all of those ideas, like according to what do you feel, right? Now, still now you are not writing. You are still not writing. So you have to, of course, somehow, if you are not, if you don't have the funds, somehow you have to invest some time inside the book. Uh, and somehow you, like no matter what, whether you have the funds or not, you have to hire an editor or a proofreader. So once the book is written, right, using these tools or this method, then you can uh, have an editor and proofreader to go through the entire process who is going to fix the, all the errors and everything. And now your book is ready. The thing is that this method is going to save you thousands of hours of frustration because uh, otherwise, if you would start writing the book, it will take you several, several hours and thousands of hours of frustration as well in the process. So this is the method which we have we are sharing with some of our really close clients, and it is working really great for them. So maybe you can use it for your communication book as well, and then let me know your feedback. How does it go? <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I will use it, and this is what I was thinking when I, I was I saw big books of very famous authors. And I was thinking, where did they find time? They're managing so many businesses. They are doing so many things. Where did they find time to write this book and another one, another one? And I think that it is a really, really great idea to just record yourself and uh, then transcribe it, then maybe record something else, transcribe it. And mm -hmm. in the end, uh, of course, you can edit it and you will have your book done so mm -hmm. thank you very much for such a great great ideas so um we described how to uh, we discussed already how to start writing uh, a book that we need to have our basic things we need to have the goal the aim that uh, we have we need to have our to know who are our target readers which problems do they have that we can solve? What is our hook? What are we doing differently? And also some interesting methods of writing a book. And the final, the final um, question that I wanted to ask to you, Vikran, is about uh, the, the, this process of becoming a best-selling best author. So are there any methods how we can promote our book, market our book, and how we can actually become best-selling author. Sure, definitely. So before we talk about the promotion, we should talk also about the packaging, right? So uh, packaging is one of the most important uh, reason why people don't see your book or perceive your book as a premium book and they don't want to buy your book. And what exactly packaging consists? So packaging consists of cover designing, right? The book description, the interior designing of the book. So these actually plays really important roles. Otherwise, people will not see you as an authority. For example, if you'll get a, maybe you will design your book cover on MS Paint or something, then they will not see you as an authority, right? So your, that is not your book. That is you 
on Amazon, right? It is the reflection of your brand, which you are representing on Amazon. That is not only your book, right? So you have to understand that. So you have to invest in a really good cover designing, also a really good interior designing of the book. And once it is done, then of course, you also have to write a proper description, which is going to speak with the audience or the readers. And of course, the, the thing which we have covered in the readers section in the outline quadrant, it will help you over here in writing a good book description because you will be also covering the pain, what exactly inside the book, what kind of a solution you're offering. So once we have the packaging ready, then let's talk about the, the promotion side. So uh, in the promotion, of course, it is not a rocket science to make a book bestseller, first of all. Uh, so there are several different ways to make a book bestseller. So for, for example, we need to understand that uh, the first question should be that where to make the book bestseller, right? So there are different lists out there. Like first of all, one is the New York Times bestseller, right? It is a, one of the most prestigious lists out there. And it is kind of a challenging for people to hit number one bestseller or bestseller on New York Times because they have a, uh, they don't just rely on the number of sales. They also check out some other things like they just work with like uh, if they also check if the book is published by a major publisher or not. They also check these things as well. So, but still like the average sales you have to get around is 20,000 sales in a week in order to hit bestseller on New York Times. Uh, then the other uh, prestigious list is called Wall Street Journal and USA Today Journals, right? These two are also prestigious list. To hit bestseller over here, you, you have to get around at least 5,000 to 7,000 sales in a week. And at bestsellingbook.com, we also provide that services. We, if, we, if a client start wanna hit a bestseller over there, then we can do that. There are some ways to do that. First of all, making the book at 99 cents, right? The Kindle version, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and just for the launch period. And then there's some, uh, some ebook deal sites out there right, which you can leverage, where you can promote your book. There are some Amazon ads. There's a platform called BookBub ads, right, which you can throw, which like you can promote your book. And of course, you have to promote. So like uh, you have to invest some money to hit bestseller on these platform. But yeah, it is not very difficult, uh, but you have to follow a set structure in order to hit bestseller over there. Now let's talk about uh, the easiest list to hit bestseller on. It is called Amazon bestseller. So there's a proper methodology to hit bestseller over here as well. So um, first of all, there's a tool out there called Publisher Rocket through which you can find out that what is the number one book selling? What's the number, uh, what's the number of sales the number one book is getting in the communication category in your case, for example, right? For example, if in communication category, if the number one book is getting 500 sales in a day, so your goal, goal will be, to get you more than 500 sales so that your book can outrank that number one book and you can become a number one bestselling author. It's a really simple, straightforward thing, right? So just do the proper research, find out the right categories, right? And choose the right category and then uh, aim for the number of sales for that. And of course, again, you can use some of the techniques like uh, you can run Amazon ads, BookBub ads. You can also build your email list, right? Uh, throughout the process when you're writing the book and then promote your book uh, inside your the moment when the book is launched so that you can have the maximum number of sales in the launch period and you can become a best-selling author. So these are uh, for different types of lists in uh, whether New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and the Amazon bestseller. The methodology is a completely like is different. The process is different, but it is not impossible. If uh, you think that it is very difficult, then of course you can hire us, right? We can do, we can take care of Amazon bestseller. We can also take care of USA Today Journal, USA Today and Wall Street Journal. We are also building a system and process through which maybe within a year, we'll also be helping our clients get on New York Times bestseller as well. Great, great. So a lot of really useful information over here. Thank you so much for sharing it with our listeners. And I can, I, I, I feel that 
after what you said, it seems so much easier to actually write a book, publish it and promote it. I think that it is, you shared some really important information. So thank you so much, Vikran, for, for sharing. Uh, can you sum up what you shared and uh, list, you know, three most important tips that you would leave our listeners with? Definitely. So uh, what I would say is, uh, first of all, uh, if you'll talk about the three important thing, uh, this is what our services is as well. So there are three phases which we offer. The first one is produce, the second one is publish, and the third one is profit. I'll cover. So these are going to be the three advice as well. So first of all, let's talk about the produce phase. So it is really important to have a great production. So produce phase is all about producing the manuscript. In the produce phase, you will start with the, uh, the creating the outline quadrant, then create the actual book outline. Then if you want to maybe write the book yourself, then you can just simply uh, record the entire thing, do the transcription, and then have someone uh, to do the editing and proofreading. Uh, once it is done, then then your production or produce phase is completed. You have already produced the manuscript. Then comes the publish phase where you will be preparing the book for publishing and distribution. So here you will take care of the cover copy, back cover copy, ISBN number, then the interior designing of the book, the, the book cover designing, book trailer video maybe, and then setting up the Amazon KDP account. Amazon KDP stands for Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. It's a really simple process then you can simply publish the Kindle paperback, Kindle book and the paperback and also maybe the audio book as well. So this comes the, the, uh, the, the publish phase. And here you have to really take care of the packaging, which I mentioned that is really important because people really judge your book by the book cover, right? It's, it's really important that you uh, make the book stand out from the other books in the market. Then comes the profit phase, right? So it, over here, you have to take care of the sales, marketing. You have to also get reviews. And then there are some platforms out there like Amazon ads, which you can leverage. There are some platforms like BookBub ads through which you can, like I have tested it. And what I have found that Amazon ads is really great at long term, long for long-term results. But if you want to start seeing sales from today itself, then you should go with BookBub ads, okay? So you can start seeing the results and sales from today itself. And once it is done, then you have to get some uh, sales reviews. And once it is done in the profit phase, it's also important to monetize your book, right? What exactly you are offering in the back end? maybe a coaching program, um, a course, uh, a speaking gig or whatever it is, like you want to do the personal branding, you can use maybe uh, a uh, giveaway inside your book which can help you monetize your book to the next level, right? So the thing is you have a best-selling book, but now you have to leverage that best-selling book to take your business to the next level. So these are gonna be the three pillars or three phases of the entire publishing. And this will be my advice as well. Perfect. Thank you so much Vikran for sharing all of this with us, for being today on Ideas and Leaders. So if our listeners want to contact you, want to use your services maybe to publish their book, where can they find you? Definitely. So I have, uh, so they can simply visit bestsellingbook.com, right? Where they can find out there are hundreds of testimonials and case studies out there on the website of how we have helped our clients turn their ideas into best-selling books and how it is helping them grow their business and uh, build their brand. So if they will, they're convinced, con if they're convinced with our, all the testimonials, then they can simply schedule a call with one of our author strategists by going to bestsellingbook.com slash call. And uh, we will come on a call with you, understand your book writing, publishing, and business goals, and share with you the package. And then of course we can take it from there. And for those uh, listeners like who want to write the book themselves, I have a resource for you. Uh, so what I found that most of the people, why they procrastinate is because they don't know the exact roadmap or exact step-by-step uh, -step, uh, checklist, which can help them in the entire book writing, publishing, and marketing pay phase. So I have created a checklist after working with thousands of my clients, uh, which actually we use it for our premium clients as well, right? So they can simply go to bestsellingbook.com forward slash checklist 
they can download this checklist, print it out, paste it on their wall where they are writing the book or publishing the book. And it's going to make the entire publishing journey extremely easy because they will be knowing exactly what to do and when to do and what's going to be the next step. And this checklist also comes with a blueprint, which explains how to use this checklist and uh, which is going to be really, really helpful in the publishing journey. So, yeah. Perfect, perfect. I really recommend to our listeners to upload uh, the resources on bestsellingbook.com because clearly we can see that Vikrant is an expert in the industry and if we want to publish a book then we uh, would really need those checklists and the, uh, this information. Thank you so much Vikrant for being with us today. Thank you for sharing this information. Thank you so much, Elena. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag Ideas and Leaders. See you in the next episode.